Good evening uh, to everyone. And uh, look, uh, you, you can see that I have a smile on my face and hyper smiling and James is smiling. We're just, we're just so excited to be able to uh, join, join again or join together again on the platform, Let's Talk About God. Um, welcome uh, to my brothers, James and Hyper. Thank you. Well, it's good to see everyone. Um, listen, I just want to uh, state from the beginning that we are, the last few Bible studies that each one of us have done have been on the uh, Bible prophecy and world history, uh, mainly in the book of Daniel and chapters two, seven, and nine, uh, talking about the world kingdoms and the successive kingdoms that come after them, and then also speaking of the beasts that represent those kingdoms and uh, <clears throat> the uh, nature or the characters that were behind those kingdoms and how they came at their appointed time as God had set out in the uh, the dream of King Nebuchadnezzar, but, in, but made it clear through the interpretation of Daniel. But moving forward for myself, I'm going to be uh, sharing some topics that I think are very important. I think that they may have been a little bit misunderstood as we read them in the Old Testament. And what I mean by being misunderstood is I, I believe that many of us may have thought that God uh, agreed with these um, topics uh, and, and be, because he set uh, some regulations in place to, uh, what can I say, moderate them. You know, so that it would have less of an effect on the people or of that day and time, but doesn't mean that he necessarily wanted that for his uh, his children. And that is what I call the accommodating or the uh, yeah the accommodating principle uh, from God in the Old Testament. Now that's just me that'll speak about that. And the topics that I will be covering, starting first with tonight, will be. Uh, Israel seeks a king. Uh, other topics that we will I will be discussing is uh, uh, war and uh, polygamy and uh, slavery and even divorce. And I know in the Old Testament it reads sometime if we do surface reading, it reads as if God has agreed to these uh, behaviors and um, allowed them. I mean, and agreed for them to take place. In reality, he never agreed to those uh, things that took place that I just mentioned, but he had to accommodate mankind where it was. So we're going to go over those topics. Uh, Hyper will be presenting a few topics that is close to his heart, and so will James over the next few weeks. I believe we are slated to continue. Let's talk about God for 2024 all the way until November 30th, and then after that we will potentially or we will take a break and prepare for 2025. But uh, tonight's topic will be Israel ask for a king. Now, before we get into that, I just want to say that, as we usually do, that let's talk about God is a pretty open uh, platform. We do. Um, <coughs> sorry, sorry. We do share a uh, various different um, opinions and thoughts in, in regards to Bible verses and Bible understandings. And we, at, at Let's Talk About God, which is James, Hyper, and myself, we are not trying to tell anybody what to believe. We're not trying to tell anybody what to do or not to believe or not to do. We are sharing from what God has revealed to us and shared with us in this word of God. And to be quite frankly, we, we, we openly seek for people to uh, make comments and to ask questions and to voice their disagreement or their agreement. Um, and that way we do it in a respectful way. If we do it in a respectful way, then that way we can all learn from each other. Um, okay. We believe, uh, as we've always said in Romans 14, five, and that was the apostle Paul who wrote that. And we agree that every person should be convinced in their own mind, their own conscience and their own dictates. And obviously the Holy Spirit is the one who brings us uh, into all truth. I think that is in John 14, 30. Uh, I could be wrong, but it is in John 14. Okay. And uh, so again, we want to say uh, welcome. And we hope that you guys are excited about the Bible studies that have been taking place and the ones that we will uh, do in the very new future moving forward. Uh, thank you again. And uh, 
James, do you mind to uh, lead us into uh, prayer before we start? All right, thank you. Let's pray. Our loving Father, we thank you so much, Lord. We have a God like you, a thank creator you. like you, a father like you. Yes. And uh, we thank you also for, for your word you gave to us before you left this planet Earth. And uh, you choose uh, many prophets to write your word, and your word claim to be truth today, and nobody can can um, fake it. But uh, also, as you as Sean will present, like Israel desire to have uh, a king, and also Lord, who uh, you said to your children and even Samuel, and um, is is not good for them to have this decision to have a king, like the pagan around them. But you said also, uh, don't try to do what is right to you, your eyes, but do the commandment of God. Mm -hmm. and if everybody did that, today we have no problem. Nobody will bomb each other, will kill each other, and mm -hmm. left their house, their land. And everybody seemed to be right what they're doing. But uh, everybody kill each other. But that is not your commandment. Mm. They did very wrong. And um, please, Lord, helping them to, un to understand and to know your way. It seemed like many Christians believe Israel was right. And if, if they're not doing that, and other people, like uh, uh, probably uh, another religion will go up and kill them, you know, but when we have you, nobody can do anything. Mm -hmm. Look at when they took when you took the people of Israel out of Egypt. No one need to die. No. You just take them by the hand like a father, make the children across the road. And um, oh it's marvelous when I when I look back what you did for those people. Mm -hmm. But uh, you still can do the same, Lord. But unfortunately, Christian Anybody who live on this planet is uh, who who's thinking they follow you, but they make a big mistake to revenge with each other. But uh, as your prophecy said, we're not far away. That will happen. But soon we will come back to take us home. Amen. Give us encouragement, Lord, to keep your commandment and to follow you and bless Sean and and give him a, a double portion of your Holy Spirit. You. And he might um, share your word with very um, comfortable and easy way, an easy way to go through your Holy Spirit. And bless Hyper and bless everybody who listen to your, to your word. And also bless me as well, Lord, to understand everything and to, to uh, put it into practice as well. Mm -hmm. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we thank you. Thee. Amen. 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 Thank you. Amen. Okay. All right. Thank you for that beautiful prayer, James. And uh, I really uh, appreciate that because obviously we all need the Holy Spirit uh, in order to share truth uh, with others. So thank you for that. And um, yeah, we are living in some pretty uh, horrible times with some pretty horrible things happening. Um, mm -hmm. But as you said, we take courage because Jesus said these things would happen, but then he would come soon. Mm. So we look forward to his soon return. Um, today, though, today I want to share with you about uh, how God accommodated his people in the Old Testament. And you know how I mentioned that in the introduction about how God accommodated his people in the Old Testament. To many of us, this may be a word that we've never heard before. This may be a word that we may not even understand, but um, today, hopefully, I could shed a little bit of light on that to give a little bit of clarity and, and that will help you to see how God accommodated uh, the Hebrews in the Old Testament and allowed things to take place, even though he was in, a, in disagreement with it, but he allowed it because of the heart of man and because of where they were in their understanding of who God was. So many might say, what do you mean by God accommodated them? And um, I just want to maybe explain that a little bit to say that you see that the people in the Old Testament were not ready for a full revelation of who God was. 
Therefore, he allowed them to have certain practices until he could teach them better. All right. Therefore, some things taught in the Bible, particularly in the Old Testament, then when that when we carefully uh, study it can lead people to uh, I mean, when we when we when we don't carefully study it, I have to apologize to get my words right. When we don't carefully study it, it can lead people to erroneously believe that God endorsed certain practices. And those certain practices that I'm talking about would be polygamy. It would be slavery. It would be war and divorce. OK. And tonight we were speaking or today we were speaking about Israel ask for a king. OK. Now. Um, with those other four topics that I just mentioned, we will look at those later, not tonight, but in a, another another Bible study. So, and we also understand that there are many who are around us. There are many who are confused. And when they read the Bible at a surface level, they are looking for reasons to hate God and, to, and they scour the Bible um, to find their justification. So they use the they use the Bible against God, uh, not knowing that they are making an error themselves. Um, but if they want to do that, to be quite honest, you you can find plenty in the Bible to justify hating God, <clears throat> and that is if you only do a surface reading. And we understand and know that there are things in Scripture that we that, that we uh, do not find to be consistent with the God of love. Again, that is if we read the scriptures carelessly. For example, God commanded his people to engage in war. He commanded the slaughter of men, women, children, and babies. These things are difficult to reconcile, to imagine um, with the God of love. Apart from understanding the Bible principle in which God accommodated himself to man's immaturity. The same is true of polygamy. We see in the Old Testament how God permitted it. But yet we see in the New Testament. It is strongly discouraged. Apart from understanding the principle of accommodation, God may appear to be arbitrary, which means he's just making it up as he goes. One minute he says you can practice polygamy. One minute he says um, you can't. One minute he says, oh yeah, go to war and destroy women, children, and animals and everything that's moving. And then one minute he's saying to love your enemies. So it can appear as if God is arbitrary, but that is not the case. I assure you of that. Now, before I continue, I just want to say to my brothers James and Hyper, I've said a fair bit there. Did you guys want to add any comments in or did you want to say anything from your studies this week on the topic? I think it's it's an important topic to discuss because what actually happens, God seems to always accommodate us um, to us. I think accommodation happened in the beginning of time as well with Adam and Eve. The situation of uh, blaming God for their sin put them in a very uh, awkward place and God had to step in and accommodate them for them um, and said to them, look, you, you've made in, in, you made me your enemy. You're hiding behind a bush. You're always placing things between us. Uh, I will make sure that I'm going to fix the situation. Um, and and I think God is always accommodated. Um, if you think um, um, I can bring the story of um, of uh, the Israelites in the wilderness before even they chose to ask for a king, God wanted to speak to them face to face, like He spoke to Adam and Eve face to face. But they were hiding behind a bush. Um, God came down and gave them the Ten Commandments and he spoke to them directly. And I can read the verse for you, which is um, 
which is so powerful to to think that people would would want to say that you know if god would want to speak to us today and if we could speak to god face to face would you like to do that sean or would you like to or james would you like to ask somebody else to speak in your place you know i would like to speak to god myself isn't it and that is what our prayers do we speak to god ourselves you know and we speak openly to him um and and tell god how we feel and and tell god um what we think is important you know i'm just trying to find the verses um just want to have a quick look sorry man um uh, yes um I want to read in Exodus chapter 19, Exodus chapter 19, verse 9. And the Lord said unto Moses, Lo, I come to unto thee in the thick cloud, that the people may hear when I speak with thee and believe thee forever. And Moses told, told the words of the people unto the Lord. And, and that is how Moses used to speak to God after they, they rejected God. And Moses brought forth the people out of the camp to meet with God. And they stood at, at the neither part of the mountain. So he brought them out of the camp. He says, now you're going to speak directly to God. You don't have to speak through me. And they chose um, not to speak to God. And you'll see in Exodus chapter 20, verse 18, because this is what is so important and beautiful, you know, about God's character is that, and all the people saw the thunderings and the lightnings and the noise of the trumpet and the mountain smoking. And when the people saw it, they removed and stood afar off. And they said unto Moses, this is what they said, Speak thou with us, and we will hear, but let us not speak, let, but let not God speak with us, because they say, lest we're going to die. And Moses said unto the people, Fear not, for God is come to prove you. And that you and that his fear may be before your faces, that he is sin not. And the people stood afar off, and Moses drew near unto the thick darkness where God was. And the Lord said unto Moses, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, Ye have seen that I I talked with you from heaven. So hear God clearly say, um, I have spoken to you face to face, but you chose. That Moses speak to us. And, and so much of that really plays into this idea that God, okay, you don't want to speak to me? Let Moses speak to me. He accommodates them there. As well. And it's so sad that, that we as humanity has, has chose to do that against God. Even we know the story of Job as well. Where his friend says, we wouldn't speak to God directly. We'll fall. God will will kill us or destroy us. But Job kept on saying, if I could only speak to God face to face. Who was between Judas, which was the betrayer of God, and Jesus himself when he washed the feet of, of Judas. So there's clear evidence that God never intends to have anything between us, Sean. But sin makes us always place things between us. Mm. Mm. And, and 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 sin separates us from the love of God and from God himself. Yeah. I should have never been this, but the saddest part, this is what we are, and this is who we are as, as humanity. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I don't have much, but um, I'm just thinking, uh, it's a question. Why God tolerate polygamy, divorce, slavery? Why he permit that? Why tolerate that? It was sin, you know, James. I believe all that was sin. Even asking for a king is sin. Asking for Moses to speak is sin. Yes, but why he tolerate that? Because he doesn't want to lose them, James. I think okay. he doesn't want to lose them. Because sometimes, even with our children, you know, um, we, we try to do our best. And sometimes when we go too hard, we may lose them, you know? Mm. So tolerated their sin so that he will reach them another way, try and get them another way. Because they weren't completely lost yet. They weren't completely lost. They just must be, they just misunderstood what was said. You know, that's what I believe. 
but people aren't completely lost when 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 they when they are fearful of God and they don't want to speak to God and they want somebody to stand in their place or to or to do the things that they want to do. Mm. God, God, God says, okay, I, I may not convince you of, of not doing this because we know it comes from our hearts. And if God doesn't convict the heart, so God looks at the heart, God sees, they, they won't change. Mm. I want to lead them and guide them so that I can make those changes later in their life. Mm. Because at the point where they cannot understand it, and I think Sean explained a little bit about that, the immaturity. Mm. James, did you want to say anything else with your own question? Yep, James. <laughs> yeah, I thought you will have said something. <laughs> yeah. I've been saying plenty. Sorry? I said, I've been saying plenty. I want to hear from you guys. Okay. Well, yes, but what I'm, I'm just thinking, I said, um, sometimes people ignorance and sometimes people uh, selfish. It's the same like when Jesus Christ was on the planet Earth. Jesus, they said to Jesus um, uh, about the, talking about the divorce. He said, Moses, tell, uh, give a letter of divorce and then you can remarry it again. But what do you say, you know? <laughs> why, why Moses gives this letter? And then Jesus hearts. said, ah, yes, your heart is too hard. But he said in the beginning, in the book of Genesis, that was not like so. That. You see? But um, sometimes people say, God just um, tend the... Uh, then the eyes away. Same like if you read in the book of uh, in the book of Romans, chapter three, verse twenty three to twenty four, down a little bit, you will see God said He never punished anyone in the past, even in the present, even in the future. But uh, He gave us a freedom of choice. But remember, each freedom there is a conse consequence. Yeah. And I hope uh, people understand that. Is not good to just thinking about ourselves, but thinking about the love of God and the love of each other. Yes, you're right, I and Sean, what you just said. I'm just, just make something a little bit open, bigger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's all right. Uh, thank you, guys. I just, I'll just keep moving forward. Um, but I, I, I think that we all agree that God is an all wise but compassionate God. Would, would, that, would that be correct? Amen. 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 And, you know, because of that, he sought to work with sinful man at our own level in order to redeem us back. Mm. So when we understand God's methods of working, and Hyper talks about that a lot, when we understand God's methods of working, then we will see that it is his overwhelming compassion, you know, that he sought to work, or in his overwhelming compassion, he sought to work with sinful, immature humanity. Hmm. And it was at our own level of comprehension, of, of understanding, of maturity. But that was only until he could mature us enough to introduce new life and, and in a, what I would say is in a more excellent way. Okay. Hmm. Now, in saying that, um, Hyper, I heard you reference about, you know, our kids and stuff. So when our kids are babies and things like that, and our babies um, don't understand certain aspects of life and things like that, do we talk to them as an adult? You know what I mean? Or do we meet them where they are? You know, yeah. sometimes you see the the, the 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 playful and the 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 laughable videos where you hear a kid talking to his parent and the kid is going blah 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 nah blah. And they say, blah, blah, and in and, and, and their little baby language. And then what does a parent do? A parent speaks back to them in the same language. And yeah. even, even, though, even though the parent is an adult, the parent is talking to that kid on his level. And that kid is learning how to pronounce words. He's learning how to use his tongue. And as they develop and get their teeth in, they, earn, they learn how to understand pronounce uh, words and things like that. But in the beginning... The reason why most kids say dada first, then mama, is because dada is the tongue in the top of the roof. And they have that development with the teeth before they can pronounce with their lips and say mama and things like that. It's not that they prefer the daddy over the mother, <laughs> as some daddies are. 
are hopeful in. They, oh, see, my son, my daughter, they love me because they said my name first. No, no, no. They do love you, of course, yes. But it's because they are not able to pronounce mama. So God is the same loving father. Are we better parents than God? No, we're not, okay? And God is meeting his children at a level where they are of maturity and understanding. And because they have just come out of 400 years of slavery, they have lost their concept, their understanding. They have lost their view of God. And they have lost, to a degree, their relationship with God because they don't know who he is because they've been so surrounded by pagan worshipers and the adulterous behaviors of those in Egypt that it has become a part of them now, you know? So I think it's important that we understand that uh, God is a loving God and a compassionate God, and he's working with us at the level at what we are. Um, the other thing that is important, and we've mentioned it before, was that God in Jesus Christ stooped to our level in coming to planet Earth in humanity to work with us little by little, again, at the level of maturity that we were at and understanding. But he, at that time, he came to give us greater light and greater understanding about himself and his character. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we've got to get this picture of God correct and how he is and how he deals with his children. And as we get that correct by reading the Bible, then we will better understand who God is. Mm -hmm. And we will understand more about his loving character mm -hmm. and things like that. Again, I just want to say that the, the, uh, the Old Testament demonstrates God's willingness to work with an immature, selfish. I heard James mention the word selfish when he was talking about why did God uh, allow them to do the things that they were doing because they had a, a selfish heart. And you know what? God was uh, was waiting for his people to, to mature a bit so that he could take them higher in understanding and maturity and that he can partner with them in the plan of redemption that was laid out in the book of Genesis when we look at Genesis 3 and verse 15, obviously there's more to that, but that's just a, a reference that came to mind. Uh, but yeah, when God was trying to redeem the world and reconcile it back to himself. So one of the things is that such things that God may have allowed, such as the polygamy and the slavery and the war and the divorce, they were a temporary accommodations to a fallen creation that he wanted to say, okay? And God accommodated certain modes of thinking and even practice or doings mm -hmm. until we were mature enough to be able to reveal more to us about his character. So can I say God spoke to us in a baby's language until he was able to talk to us in a more mature um, uh, teenage language or a young adult or a mature adult language, depending on where we were in our relationship with him. Now, I just want to say <clears throat> one more thing, and then I want to see if you brothers have any other comments that you might want to add or uh, you might want to share an experience or a Bible verse. But I just wanted to say, now, in God accommodating the Hebrews in the Old Testament by, I want to say, permitting, allowing polygamy and war and slavery and divorce, that would be pretty risky for God, wouldn't it? Oh. That would be pretty risky of God. And the reason why it would be pretty risky was because God was running the risk of being misunderstood. God was running the risk of being misunderstood by both the people whom he was accommodating, the Hebrews in the Old Testament, as well as by those who throughout the ages or throughout the centuries or throughout time would, would be reading the Bible or the divinely inspired word of God. So, yes, yes. Sometimes, sometimes we, we too, we might not understand the old idiom yeah. in, in the scripture. Yeah. And uh, probably people might just say what I'm talking about. I just give an example, said an example, you take an example like um, Numbers chapter 13, verse 1 and 2, right? If you read the Numbers chapter 13, verse 1 and 2, and he said, um, let, me, let me have a look. He said, um, 
And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, Send thou men that they may search the land of Canaan, which I give unto the children of Israel, yeah. of every tribe of their father shall he send a man, every one a ruler among them. Now, if you take this, he said exactly God spake and God said that. But when, when you return back to, uh, when you go into Deuteronomy, yeah. Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 22, he yeah. said, And he, the people of Israel, came near unto me, unto God, every one of you, every one of them, and, and said, We will send men before us, and they shall search us out the land. And bring us word against by what way we must go up and into what cities cities we shall come. You see, but God already explained everything to them. Yeah. And now they come to God and said, we will do that to make sure, because we not trust you in a way. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. But, but, but uh, when you look at numbers, it sounds like God said that to them. Exactly. That is not true. That's why what I said, sometimes we have to understand the old idiom to understand the word of God, because the Bible explains itself, similar like you just mentioned. I mean, yeah. but that, that, that is a really good analogy and Bible uh, analogy of how God accommodated the people mm -hmm. in their immaturity. Because mm -hmm. as you said, God had already said, that land is yours. Go up yeah. and, and acquire it. Go up and yes. obtain it. Go yeah. up and, and dwell in it. Yeah. But, but then they, in their mind, said, oh, wait, 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 wait a minute. Hold on. Now, mm -hmm. I, I'm not sure about this. Let me send some people out. And then, again, Mo was it Moses or Abraham? Moses. is Moses, right? Yeah. Moses. Moses accommodated them by saying, okay, yeah, send somebody. And he sent a leader from each of the tribes to go and to, to uh, see what the land entailed and what it was made up of and things like that. So you're similar, right. God accommodated their lack of trust in similar, that situation. Similar thing like uh, you just mentioned before. Like um, uh, God said, uh, don't do the right thing into your own eyes, but yeah. keep my commandment. But yes. instead to keep his commandment, they try to do things in their own eyes. You know, yes. they, they believe that might be helping them to, uh, to know what's going on. But just... Yeah. Listen to God and keep his commandments. That's it. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Amen. And and so so back to my, my little statement I was making about this could be risky for God. Mm. But um the reason why it could be risky was because um both groups, which was the people that he was accommodating, the Hebrews in that time, and those of us who will read the Bible in the throughout the centuries following that, both groups could be misled into believing that God endorsed these practices, which is polygamy, war, slavery, and um, and divorce, that we could be we could be um, uh, be misled into believing that God endorsed these practices, rather than this is important. This is key points here. Rather than God merely and temporarily tolerated those things, men had already set in their minds to do. So James is your perfect analogy. I think it what was it in numbers is it numbers 13? Yeah, numbers I think that's the one and two. And then yeah. Deuteronomy chapter one verse one. 22. Yeah. Yeah. So in that situation, God had already said go and take it, but mm. they didn't believe it. So God had to accommodate their lack of trust and their immaturity in him to say, okay, yeah, go ahead and send the spies. And on a care and on a um, what they call it, on a, a surface level of reading, as you said, James, it appears as if God was the one who said, go spy the land out. Yeah. But God yeah, yeah. Said it sounds like that. But, but yeah. for me personally, when I read it, it seemed like they said they want to see with their own eyes to make sure that is true. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's, but that's what God said. God said, keep the commandment of God, but don't, don't do what is right with your eyes, you know? So often we might think something is right, but later on we regret what we did. 
You see what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I think a good thing in that situation that you just highlighted is because God understood that they were not at a mature level hmm. and in a, in, in a mature relationship with him, but God did not forsake them. No. God allowed them to still have that experience, but then he still accommodated them. Also for his own, own sake. For his own sake. <laughs> for his own sake. Great example. So in character. And 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 Sean, um, I just want to say, and I want to agree to what you guys were saying. It's so powerful what you are saying. And maybe we don't understand the depth of God working in our lives. So when you look at, like, I think I mentioned it a little bit earlier, but if you go deeper, how can God actually change our hearts? If we have, you said they've made up their mind already. James, I think you said it already. How can God just say, do this? That will be force. Yeah. You know? That will be force. If God says, you don't do this, I want you to have only one wife. But you've made up your mind already. How am I going to stop you if I'm not a God of force? You know, so I'm going to, I'm going to allow you to do that, but I'm going to keep on speaking to you. Amen. I'm going to keep on being your Lord. I'm going to keep on loving you until you realize what you are doing is wrong. Yeah. That, when, that, when, that's when, important. When, when you was five, six years old, when your mom said, brush your teeth, do you think it falls on you? <laughs> and then later on, later on, you said, hey, that is a good thing. You continue doing it even growing up. Yes. Because, you know, it was, she was right, you know. Even though you, did, <laughs> even though you didn't understand. He never used force. He used, he used uh, the Holy Spirit and he used love. Amen. He never used force. Not Amen. by power, nor by might. Yeah, by the Holy Spirit. <laughs> so, so, yeah. hey, so, so now, just to move a little bit further ahead, uh, just you know, and we're always trying to be mindful of time. What may happen is I may have to uh, cut this one, this Bible study, in half, and we can pick it up uh, next week in part two. Okay, um, but I'm really, I'm really liking what I'm hearing uh, here tonight in this Bible study, and I hope that all our uh, our listeners and our viewers are are following along and that they're enjoying this Bible study as well, because this is some important information on how we should understand the reason why God allowed or permitted certain things to take place during the Old Testament time. And it wasn't because God wanted to do that or God wanted it that way. It was because of the hearts of the people at that time and because mm -hmm. of the maturity, or should, or should I say the immaturity or the lack of maturity of the people at that time. Even, and, and that is exactly, even in Ezekiel chapter 20, verse 25, Ezekiel is standing on the banks of Babylon. You know the song, by the rivers of Babylon? Yeah. The banks of the river, and God comes to him and speaks to him. And he says to him, then I gave them laws that are not good and the commandments that do not bring life. Yeah. Is, is that true? Is that true? No. <laughs> <laughs> you know, is is the opposite, you know? Yeah. But, it but, sounds it sounds like that, but you're right, James. It's the opposite. The opposite, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes. I'm like I said, I'm really, I'm really liking what I'm hearing here today. So uh so just to get into it just a little bit, we're going to look at a an example, another example, I should say, because there's been plenty that has been cited or referenced here in this Bible study, but we're gonna look at another example of how God accommodated his. Uh, uh, accommodated himself to man's ignorance, uh, and and the topic of today is uh, Israel seeks or a Israel asks for a king. Mm -hmm. So God accommodated man's ignorance in the time of when Israel was desiring a king. So what we have to understand, and we're going to read this Bible verse in a second. We have to understand that Israel was influenced by the nations that surrounded them. And they wanted to be like those nations and they wanted to imitate those nations. But they should have been, as James said, keeping God's commandments and obeying God. But they were influenced by the people around them. And many of us who have children, we understand that because our children go to school. Our children play in the neighborhoods, in the communities. And they even <laughs> some of us have children that play sports and things like that. And when our children are exposed to other children and some of the things that they are permitted to do, some of the things that they are allowed to do, some of the things that they have 
and stuff like that. Our children want to imitate those things. Our children want to have access to those things. Our children want to be like other children. They said, oh, Johnny has that new bicycle that he was riding at the BMX track. I want a bike like Johnny, you know? Or Susie says, you know, I, 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 I saw that uh, Mary Jane had a nice color of, uh, of pink cleats at the uh, soccer trials. Mm -hmm. I want some of those. Now, those may be just silly little examples, but you get the point that I'm making about how Israel or the Hebrews were influenced at that time by the surrounding nations. And we, too, are influenced. As I've said many times on this platform, my background is in basketball. So when I was growing up, the, the slogan was, be like Mike. And I'm not talking Michael Jackson. Mm -hmm. It was be like Mike. So everyone wanted to be like Mike. Mike was on the basketball court, dunking. He, 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 he walked around. He always had his tongue out. You know, he always had his tongue out. And so many people imitated that part of him. They didn't have the ability that he had. But they imitated that part by having their tongues hanging on their tongues wagging to be like. So they were influenced by that type of person and that type of exposure to the marketing that they had done. And the same for Israel. They had been exposed to other nations around them and they wanted to be like them. And to further reference this, and then after this, we're going to I'm going to end on a, on a quote and we're going to uh, finish this one and we'll pick up part two next week. But we're going to read. Um, 1 Samuel chapter 8, verse 4 through 7. And I've already got it in my notes, so I'm going to read it <clears throat> really quickly. And uh, then we're going to talk about it. And then we're going to end on a quote and we're going to finish up uh, today's uh, Bible study uh, part one. OK, so uh, 1 Samuel chapter 8, verses 4 through 7 reads, Then all the elders of Israel gathered to themselves together and came to Saul unto Ramah and said unto him, Behold, thou art old, and thy sons walk not in thy ways. Now make us a king to judge us like all the nations. Did you hear that? Like all mm -hmm. the nations. But the thing displeased Samuel when they said, Give us a king to judge us. And Samuel prayed unto the Lord, and the Lord said unto Samuel, Hearken unto the voice of the people, and all that they say unto thee. For they have not rejected thee, but they have rejected me that I should not reign over them. Now, oh, wow. we we understand that. We've been using analogies about our children. Our children don't like us telling them what to do, especially when they get older, you know? So they reject our, um, some would say authority over them, but God wasn't trying to use authority, but it is our love for them. They reject it because they feel that they know more than us. They know what's best for them. And as I've heard, I think you say, Hybrid says, they wanted to walk in their own councils, you know, and things like that. So um, when we look at it, yes, James. I think you, you read uh, 1 Samuel 8, 4 to 7, is it? Correct, yes. But yes. Um, there's a good point. It sounds like a good point for, um, for the people of God, for the people of Israel. Yes. When, when verse <laughs> five, listen to what verse 5 said. It said, And said unto him, to Samuel, Behold, thou art whole, you very whole now, and, and thy son walk not in thy ways. Thy son is not doing the right thing. Yes. Thy son is doing bad thing, like, like the Gentile people. You know what I mean? Mm. Is that a good excuse for them to have a king like the Gentile? God would have always chosen somebody else. Sorry? God would have always chosen somebody else. Yes, but but uh, but the, like Sean mentioned before, like that's what they want in the first place. They want um, they want somebody to uh, to 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 guide them. But uh, in in with Moses, I think if I'm not wrong, no, with Moses at that time, no, 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 not with Moses. Yes, they asked a king for the first time. I think from from Samuel. Yes, mm, Samuel. and uh, but but uh, God God uh, agree with them to do that. But God knows they turn their back on him. You imagine, even you turn your back on him, he still choose someone for you. Yeah, no, it's amazing. Yeah. And uh, we human being probably we might not do that. 
we keep certain reserve inside and and uh, we just remember, you know, oh, you want this, you want it, you don't want me, you know, be upset. But God never upset on that. Yeah. No. That God knows they will suffer by the by to 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 have a king like themselves. They will suffer because they will become a slave. Yeah. Yes. True. And, and I forgot Samuel was chosen by God. Hmm. And and here they want to choose the king. You know, oh, we want to choose a king. We want the king. Um, and God gave them the king that they wanted. But they, they, they don't they don't look in the heart. They look at beautiful, you know, and strong and tall. Samuel was, <laughs> Samuel was the tallest man among many, you know. Yeah, I think I think that's in First Samuel sixteen verse twenty four, where God is saying to Samuel, "Man looketh upon the outside, the appearance, where exactly. God looketh upon the heart." Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Amen. So, so. So in part two, I'm just going to say in part two, we're going to discuss some of the difficulties that the, the Israelites had in selecting a king and how God told them what type of king Saul would be. OK, mm -hmm. before we say that, I want to add this Bible verse. Uh, it's it found in um, first Samuel, chapter eight, verse nine and ten. And the reason why I'm adding this is because God knew that the people of Israel would want a king. Before they even asked for it, God knew that they would ask for a king. Hmm. He already knew the hearts of the people. He knew everything. Everything. Amen. And just to show you, not only us, but that our viewers and listeners have a Bible verse to reference. I want us to, I'm going to read very quickly uh, 1 Samuel chapter 8, verse 9 and 10, just to let you know. And that reads, now, therefore, hearken unto their voice. And then it says, how be it yet protest solemnly unto them and show them the manner of king uh, uh, which shall reign over them. Wait, that's not the right one. Hold on. That shall uh, reign over them. Yes, you're right. No, no, no. The words. And ask him for a king. Uh, um, no, there's another. Oh, my God. I have to see where I can find that other. Here, oh, here oh, it no, is. No, wait, wait, here it is. Here it is. Sorry. So, so I was I got excited and and looked at the wrong uh, Bible verse. The Bible verse where the children of Israel, where God said the children of Israel would ask for a king before they even asked for it, is found in Deuteronomy chapter seventeen and verse fourteen, and that reads: Once you have entered the land the Lord your God is giving you, and you have taken possession of it and settled down in it, you might say, "Let's appoint a king over us." as all of our neighboring nations have done. And that in, that's in the Common English uh, Bible. Um, mm -hmm. Again, that's in Deuteronomy 17, verse 14. God already knew that the people of Israel, the Hebrews were gonna ask for a king before mm -hmm. they even did it. And God was willing to accommodate and he told Samuel to hearken unto their voice, listen to them and give them what they asked for. and. Next week, we're going to talk a little bit more about that and the type of king that uh, Saul would be over uh, the people, even though they had uh, sought and asked for a king. I just want to uh, conclude on this quote. Is there any comments from uh, either of you before we uh, conclude on the quote? And just a question. Maybe the, the, your quote will answer the question as well. So, Sean, if somebody listens to us and says, OK, we know God is accommodative. But when does accommodation stop? Does he always just accommodate, accommodate, accommodate? When we are mature enough, we, we, we need to mature and obey God's word, and we need to trust God. God is working with us where we are, but if our will is for God's will to be done, then I think it may not cease, but we will be more in, in line with God. So can you think of a story that that accommodation actually came to an end? Uh what, the flood? <laughs> what do you what do you what do you think, James? That's a that I, I did I didn't I didn't listen to carefully. Can you repeat it again for me, please? So we see that God accommodates us in our sin, right? Because of our immaturity. 
But when does that accommodation actually come, or how does it come to an end? Maybe I should say, how does it come to an end? Uh, how does it come to an end? On, on this planet Earth, or after the thousand years you're talking? No, just what do you think? What do you think about it? Or is God always just accommodating, accommodating, accommodating? No. Yeah, but, but God always, God always loves his children. But uh, I believe in um, after Jesus Christ return, uh, sin will be, uh, according to Jesus himself, sin will be no more. Mm. You know, but um, that's what I can say. That will... will what, what, what story were you thinking in particular, Ivor? I was thinking of the story of Jesus standing um, in Pilate because I've got these beautiful verses. Mm. And I was thinking, is, was this the almost like the finish line of where our accommodation actually stops? How yeah. there's no more accommodation anymore? Only is he going to return? Sorry? No, yeah, let me just read this to you. So yeah. Pilate stands there and he says, this is Luke chapter 19 from 14 to 16. He says, look, here is your king. So he puts Jesus in front of him, right? He yeah. said, okay. And this is what they say. Away with him, they yell. Away with him. Crucify him, they say. Look at what they say to the king, which is mm. God, right? Which they've done in the Old Testament, like Sean has shown. They didn't want God. They're not sinning against you, he said to Samuel. You, we read there. They're sinning against me. And this is what they're doing again. They say, no, crucify him. So, 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 uh, Pilate said, What? Crucify your king? Pilate asked, We have no king, they say. Oh, but look, look at what they say, but Caesar. Yeah. You see, so they say they want Caesar as their king. They yeah. don't really choose the king, they choose the foreign nation's king, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The leading priest shouted, Then Pilate turned to Jesus over to them so that they could crucify him. So, my question is, how did this come? Because they've rejected Jesus to a point of God being, they can't now say in the face to say, we didn't have God speak to us face to face because here Jesus was face to face with them. They've rejected God. They've rejected Jesus. And they even want to kill him, right? What happened after this? What happened after? When they rejected him. What happened in Israel? The oh. Oh, they've been, they've, they've been uh, destroyed in AD 70. Yes, well said, James. Yeah. All of Israel were given over to what they wanted. Yeah. And, 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 and if we want to understand how God's accommodation works, like you guys have clearly said, God accommodates us. But when we've rejected him, clearly he has to offer us what we want. And he yeah. gave us. And they were fully overthrown. They, it, it was the most horrible time when Israel was, when, when Jerusalem was taken. It was the most horrible time ever because they were fully given over to their choices. Yeah, yeah but one thing we have to remember because it's not the end. Because someone always behind those things. Look at Job, you know, who assaulted Job. You know, that, that Saturn, you know, when Saturn is gone forever, then everything is finished. That's what I'm saying to you before. Understand. Wait it until is. after the thousand years. <laughs> we are given over. But I'm just, people would say, okay, in our lives today, will God always accommodate me with my sin? No. Your sin will lead you to, to death. There is a consequence. There is a consequence. And make <laughs> consequence by giving up God completely. Yeah, I don't want to speak about it on here, but I had experience once where somebody came to us and rejected God in the same way, and and it's and it's so sad. The next day he passed away. Ooh. So and and it's not happened once; it happened twice to us already. Mm -hmm. They said face to face, we don't want nothing to do with God, and both those people passed away. And South Africa is a very dangerous place to live in, but. What I'm just saying is that, you know, we are so comfortable in our homes tonight, so protection, protected by so many things. Satan would love, like you say, James, want to destroy us. Mm. 
God is always protecting us. God is the one who keeps us safe. You know, that, and it, that, we have a good example when Jesus Christ was on the cross. These two guys on the cross, one accept him and he already got the promise and yeah. the other one reject him. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's sad. It's sad. It is sad. Where where we, so, we completely cut ourselves off from the power of God and God's protection. Mm. Mm. So um so in my in my conclusion, I just want to say two things. I said one before, but I'm gonna say two things. One is as I said, I'm gonna end on a quote. And the second thing is I want to have a little note, you know, some they say, note this. Yeah. You know, this little nugget, just understand this, that that in the old testament, that everything in which like God accommodated um the people was not because of that 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 they wanted to be like God. He wasn't accommodating them and saying, no, I want to be like you. No, he accommodated them and um uh and well when they no longer wanted to be like him and to have his mind a character but he accommodated them when they wanted to be like other nations and in a little regard or a little way uh hyper to answer your question about when does accommodation end it's we could have said like when probation closes or as you've referenced when we reject god and he gives us over you know so even in that time Though they had rejected God and wanted to have a king, they had not fully rejected God in the sense where they said, away from me, we don't want you anymore. So God was still able to work with them because as James said, and you said it, I agree, God never forces himself on us. When we fully reject God, he will respect what we say. Okay? Then I sometimes, want to... Follow. Sometimes God can reject someone because it gives them uh, it gives them to whatever they want, but uh, not really fully reject them. The same like some a parent can do that to their children and let them do their experience and and uh, see their own consequence because you already knows what they want. They will going something something bad ahead in front of them. But you let them go and then they return back home. Oh, praise the Lord. Come back, my daughter or my son. Well, you know what I mean? Well, prime example is the prodigal yeah. son. Yes, yeah, sometimes that can happen. But not God not reject you totally. As long as you want to return, he will. his arm is wide open. The same like prodigal son. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. what I'm saying, like the prodigal son. So let's, uh, let's, let's close up or conclude on um, this little quote. This quote is from my favorite Christian author in... I hope that I got this right as far as the reference on the page. If I didn't, I'll correct myself next week. But I think it is Prophets and Kings, page six and seven. Now, I'll have to double check that because I, I could be wrong, but I will correct myself or confirm next week when I do my uh, Bible study uh, next week on, the, on part two of this, okay? So um, I just want to read this. It says, like all the nations, the Israelites did not realize that to be in this respect, unlike other nations, was a special privilege and a blessing. But they, disregarding this high honor, eagerly desired to imitate the example of the heathen. And still the longing to conform to worldly practices and customs exist among the professed people of God today. Mm -hmm. So it's not just in the Old Testament that that happened. That's happening still today. Mm -hmm. okay? As they depart from the Lord, they become ambitious for the gains and honor of the world. Mm -hmm. Christians are constantly seeking to imitate the practices of those who worship the God of this world. The God of this world is Satan. Mm -hmm. But all who pursue this course thereby separate from the source of their strength. Becoming the friends of the world, they are the enemies of God. For they sake, for the sake of earthly distinction, they sacrifice the unspeakable honor to which God has called them of showing forth the praises of him who hath called them out of darkness into his marvelous light. Amen. 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 And with that being said, we're going to close with uh, our prayer. Let us bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, 
We thank you tonight for the Bible study. We thank you for the opportunity to share the things that you've impressed upon our hearts, the things that you have brought to mind tonight that we can share with those who are listening and uh, who view this, uh, this YouTube video. Lord, we pray that you will bless them with the Holy Spirit to give them understanding and clarity on the matter. And Lord, we pray that uh, because of that, they will come to see you in a greater light. They will come to understand you in a better view. They will understand the way that you deal with us and how much you love us and that you do not force us to do anything. Mm -hmm. But Lord, because you love us, you give us freedom of choice. Bless us tonight as we sleep through the night. May you keep us and may we wake in the morning according to your mercies and grace. And bless those who listen to this video as well. May you be with them as well. We thank you for the opportunity you've given us, dear Lord. We pray that you will continue to be glorified for the uh, on the platform. Let's talk about God as we discuss you and uh, how the Bible um, uh, describes and, and um, gives us the true uh, uh, understanding of your character and uh, your government, dear Lord. Thank you. Be with us always. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Amen, amen. amen.